welcome to America's Top 40 in 1979. And our uh, Casey Kasem is uh, this gentleman here. His name is DeSoto. Welcome back, DeSoto. Uh, thank you for happening, having me. That's, uh, yes, that's DeSoto Brown in the late 1970s, actually, mm -hmm. uh, on a visit to San Francisco, of all things, in a BART train. There we go. And there he, is. he looks the way he does today. He doesn't just, look the same as he did back just then. Just as awesome, yeah. And just, well. like, just like last time, we were actually linking our research investigation to objects outside of our discipline of architecture, which the right. show is about, and we're looking right. at vehicles. So we were thinking, okay, now we're in the late 70s, because we were mid-70s last time, the mm -hmm. ANC Pacer. So we thought, what's the most iconic car from that era? And it is... There it is. Mm -hmm. There it is. And that is, that is the... That is the, what the heck is that thing? That's the DeLorean. De that heck it is. Because we said Pacer and that threw me off. The DeLorean was um, a car that flared up in interest in the late 1970s. It had a stainless steel body and you are most familiar with it because it appeared in the Back to the Future movies mm -hmm, when exactly. it was already kind of iconic. It had the gull wing doors. Um, as you pointed out, it wasn't necessarily a great car. It wasn't necessarily a... Uh, sensible car, mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. it's an iconic, yeah, uh, yeah. symbolic car yeah. of the 1970s, and there's a Hot Wheels version on the and left. And I was going to say, me, the little Americano, you know, yeah. little German guy, you know, was crazy about that and was dreaming about with my little Gorky you toy, you know. You was, had a little toy? Yeah, you had yeah, a little toy the, DeLorean? The Gorky toys. But go back to the picture, coming full circle, I was yes. driving with my friend Stefan, hi Stefan, on the Autobahn last year, so look at the license plates. I know, I was going to say, this, this, is, this you is, saw that. This is Bochum, which is close to the city where my son Joey goes to school. Hi, Joey. So, you know, this is, uh, so they're, this they're is, still cool. They're still iconic, and they will always be, right? And so you took that picture, I those two pictures. Picture. I wasn't the DeLorean, driving just for the ones. You saw, the, you saw a DeLorean on the road in Germany. On the Autobahn, yeah, okay. exactly. So what does it tell us? It's still iconic. Yes, it, it will is. never be out of style. True. So that applies to the architecture as well that we're going to show. And on picture three, we we will see that it's in a really sort of challenging uh, uh, condition, position here, location. This is basically out west, right? Yes. This is a highway. Yes. And um, then there is the harbor in the back, and that's actually uh, Pearl Harbor. Correct. So this is Buzz's Steakhouse. There are a number of Buzz's Steakhouses, and this one happens to be in an area of which is relevant to our discussion, that grew up in the 1970s. Mm -hmm. And the Pearl Ridge area became intensively developed at that time. And it is very car oriented. It's mm -hmm, very much mm -hmm. an area that was dependent upon people traveling by mm -hmm, car. Mm -hmm. And so that ties in with all the things yeah, that we're yeah, talking yeah. about. So in one sense, this is a beautiful uh, scenic view. But then, of course, we've got some big high tension wires in the foreground. We oh, also absolutely. have the Wow power plant there too, mm -hmm, as mm -hmm, well as the mm -hmm. industrial aspect of and military yeah, yeah, aspect yeah, yeah. of Pearl Harbor. So but it's the, not. It, so if people go there, they go for the view, and that's why the background picture is already the next picture, number four, that we see all the time. The, the building really capitalizes on the view. Correct. And that's something that, by the way, uh, in an unfortunate way, buildings these days, all these towers in Kaka'ako, they do that too. And yeah. since they all, everyone wants the view, that's why they're all glass. That's right. And then the glass is not so good in the tropics because it gets hot, and then you're in trouble, right? Correct. But Steve Owl, and we should say this, uh, Casey Kasem's version is called Steve Owl's Top 3 That's from right. the 70s, That's right? right? That's exactly right, because we've been talking about, we talked about Ward Warehouse, we talked about his personal home, mm -hmm. we're talking about Buzz's Steakhouse, mm -hmm. and we will be talking about mm -hmm. Ward Plaza. Mm -hmm. So when you look at the, at the detailing, it's really interesting that the very top, the iconic we get to next is rectilinear. And, and on the sort of window eye level, it actually uh, converts to something that's very typical for the, for the 70s. What is that? Well, we talked about beforehand, you and I, the diagonal 45 degree angle windows, yeah. which not only are an interesting visual statement and appearance, mm -hmm. but they also have a function, a utilitarian function, yeah, yeah. of uh, reducing um, reflection. And glare, yeah. And, yeah, yeah. and glare, and mm -hmm. so there is a, a purpose to that in addition to it being something that looks cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this picture here, so when, when we talk about 45 degree angle, I was talking in the previous picture about it in plan, so when you draw yes. a plan of a building, so it uh, has a sort of 45 degree, but then uh, also in section it is 45 degree, which is what you were talking about. Right. So these two things in combination gets us again to this picture here, 
where you can see in addition to this sort of angling, and if you position this towards the south, and I, I took these pictures about two weeks ago, it was midday, it was damn hot, mm -hmm. I was dripping, mm -hmm. and the building is not dripping, mm -hmm. it's not sweating, it's staying cool. Uh, different to me, correct? Because it's basically uh, almost the windows take the exact insection, the angle of the sun, the sun angle. So right. that's another advantage. Position right, it only works to the south, to the west, and the east. It doesn't work mm -hmm. to the south. It works, but in addition, these sort of iconic overhangs here, you know. Right, uh, and you were you were pointing out beforehand too that we've got a combination of the angle on the lower level, and then at the top we've got a rectilinear mm -hmm, or mm -hmm. more square appearance. So mm -hmm. we've got that exterior square uh, framework that's yeah, sticking yeah, out yeah, yeah. that is presumably somewhat structural but also a statement yeah, yeah. and as, as mm -hmm. decorative. Yeah. And it's a contrast of the angles and the squares. Mm -hmm. We see that even better in the next picture. And again, we use cars as uh, vehicles for thought. And I donated my, this is my car and car. Excellent, so that's this, excellent. This fits in, right? Was and built it's a very from, nice squared off car. Exactly, it was, was built from the beginning of the 70s till the end. And you can see this sort of, again, this sort of very iconic sort of pro projecting out, protruding out. And we saw this in Wart Warehouse. Yep. Somehow we saw it in, in Steve's own house a little bit, but he was really sort of massaging that and almost like overemphasizing this in, in this case here, right, right? right? And it leads to when we get to the next picture to this, the most dramatic when you're like at the bottom of this hill and you look up, this is like a spaceship, right? Yes. I mean, it's really like flying, floating, yes. or jumping at you, right? Yeah, um, and, it's, and it's really... In a way, that almost looks like World's Fair architecture yeah, to yeah, me yeah. Yeah. because it is very much a statement mm -hmm. and it is dramatic and yeah, it's supposed yeah, yeah. to be yeah, dramatic. Yeah, yeah. And you're supposed to look up the hill and see yeah. it and there it is and it really looks yeah. cool. And we, we have another architect that we associate with that sort of, um, uh, sort of uh, methodology that you have some very uh, spectacular memories and that's the next picture. And this gentleman's name is John Lautner, and he, I would say, he's Mr. Cantilever. Right. And you have some very sort of existential memories of him. Well, it, Also, uh, going back to uh, sort of the moderator of the show, who is Casey Kasem. Right? <laughs> well, <laughs> the, um, the thing about this, this, this uh, Lautner is a guy who worked in Los Angeles. He's very well known, as you pointed out, for these structures that protrude out from hillsides mm -hmm. and that are sort of floating there as mm -hmm. rectangles. Mm -hmm. um, he's most famous for the chemosphere or mm -hmm. chemosphere, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which is this kooky um, structure that is supported on a single central pillar mm -hmm. that's kind of rounded. It's mm -hmm. kind of like La Ronde yeah, yeah, on yeah. a pillar. And this, this is why also the windows are angled the same And the way. windows are angled. There we go. Comes off and this uh, the, the chemosphere is owned by a fellow German mm -hmm. of your countrymen of yours who's the head of Benedict Hoshin, who's mm -hmm. the head of a famous mm -hmm. publishing company. Mm -hmm. And I had hoped to be, I had been told that I might be able to mm -hmm. go and visit that house mm -hmm. sometime, which mm -hmm. I hope I will okay. someday. But the, we go to the next picture. So the building is iconic. Um, uh, also, when you go a little further back, picture 10. And it is still iconic if you give it even more further back, because this is crazy highway here, number 11. And, and the building is still jumping out and basically says, hey, look at me. Hey, look yeah. at me. But this is the point you're hiding. I, I asked you to tell us another story. That's the story of Casey Kasem. Absolutely. In, in this area. It has to do with another car that you were in close touch with. That's exactly right. To him. And it's appropriate because in uh, 1978, I went to the Cam Drive and Swap Meet one Saturday, Sunday morning. Mm -hmm. And on my way home, the Cam Drive is located not far from the photo mm -hmm. that we just mm -hmm. saw. In my Volkswagen Beetle on the H1 freeway, I had a car crash and flipped the car and destroyed the car, but at the time that the car flipped over, mm -hmm. I was listening to ABBA singing Take a Chance on Me, number seven that week on American Top 40. The, the Beatle and ABBA and DeSoto around Casey can't get it better right now. Anyway, I, sur I survived and, that. And, and we should basically say at this point, when people are saying, why the heck are they telling us their crazy stories? It's actually not because of us, it's because we want to have the audience if they are old enough and if they're not asked their parents to think about the most sort of clues from certain situations of the time because then you can really infuse your memory in the zeitgeist which is so important about good architecture as we talk right and now. and too you use the word zeitgeist which maybe not a lot of people are familiar with it's a german word but it's used mm -hmm. in english mm -hmm. and it refers to the spirit of a time mm -hmm. meaning what are the pervasive thoughts what mm -hmm. are people thinking about mm -hmm. what do people perceive yeah and we're talking about Steve Au's uh, architecture, which is very much of the zeitgeist of the mm -hmm, 70s mm -hmm. in a lot of different mm -hmm. ways. And 
that's really appropriate. Yeah. So it is to share personal stories from the time. Again, we hope people are also thinking about the yeah. time period, yeah. what yeah. they think about it, and what they may have heard about it, yeah. and what yeah. they know about it. Well, we might say because the architect was probably so infused in its time, was able to do such a characteristic, mm -hmm. expressive architecture. Exactly. And the next building, the next picture is that you know this nature of sort of mercantile or in, in, you know architecture is really sort of. The location is very industrial. We saw on the very left here, we saw a rugged corrugated metal shack, right? You were talking about this big sort of um, um, post structure there. So the building basically has a sort of uh, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde sort of ambivalence. The, the sort of the, the, the entrance or where the servers are, you know, is, is, is this side, which is much less spectacular. Mm -hmm. And the next picture is, is also referring to how he treated it with, uh, with uh, what warehouse, right? Exactly. And what we're seeing is the zeitgeist of that time of the 70s was in large part uh, an affinity for naturalness, mm -hmm. an affinity for natural substances, natural services. Mm -hmm. This, of course, is in con tandem with a lot of artificial yeah, stuff yeah, in the yeah, 70s yeah. as well. But what you see here is the raw wood texture of this this siding here, it's mm -hmm. got paint on it, mm -hmm. but it isn't adorned with anything else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's supposed to look like wood. You can mm -hmm. clearly see mm -hmm. that those mm -hmm. are pieces mm -hmm. of wood. Absolutely. So it has just this plain painted sign yeah, yeah. against that wood. Yeah. No neon, no shininess. Exactly. It's supposed to just look like yeah. we built a natural wood yeah, structure yeah, yeah. here. And, and we will see in a little bit that that also has a very sort of inherent sort of typological uh, reasoning or mm -hmm. justification. But mm -hmm. before we do that, we go to the next picture and we go a little further around and then we see the circular windows that you were pointing and out. Pointing out a word warehouse. Ago. Exactly. Right. Where they right. are again. And we also, when you look closer, you can see this where the entrance is. One side is wedged into the wall, so we got this 45 degree yep. angle anymore. And we should also say it's a little center. There's another little uh, business in there, and this is why the staircase tower that's also sort of right. overemphasized and made iconic right. serves that purpose. And, and again, I really am seeing uh, just the stuff that we've been talking about yeah, here: yeah, yeah. The, the the wood structures, the wood framework the circular windows. It's mm -hmm. very cool for me to see these mm -hmm. continuing uh, motifs that mm -hmm. show up in his work. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so as we always do, we want to zoom closer and we want to look more into it. And so this one here, we look into uh, the joinery and the materiality. And we always, when we prepare, you know, we um, give each other a hard time and saying, well, this is good, but it's not good enough. So you perfectly said, well, Martin, you know, compare this pull out a picture we had shown at War Warehouse, and there exactly. it is. We put it at the, at the top left. Right? Correct. So there, there we see the similarity of those two structures. Mm -hmm. The basic woods joined together with this very obvious steel frame with this, this steel you know, mm -hmm. material that's, mm -hmm. that's bolted on with mm -hmm. these very large mm -hmm. bolts yeah, that yeah. you can also clearly yeah. see, too. And we were arguing last time. You say a War Warehouse was overdimensioned, and I had my doubts, and maybe this is the proof of evidence of my doubts, because here it's less dimension and you can see the wood kind of warping right 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 nevertheless you can see it uh sort of aging you know not that bad i mean this is almost half a century old mm -hmm. and, and look at look at you know sort of us no offense and this is actually the point <laughs> to now introduce a little break that we're going to have because yep. after the break you always want to see how martin looked like yeah so we'll, we'll see martin in the 70s so so we will do that after the little break and then we're going to be back with a buzz's steakhouse and uh, juicy de soto <laughs> Aloha! Please join the Hawaii Farmers Series every Thursday on ThinkTech. We live stream from 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. And we are... Uh, Matthew Johnson and Justine Spiritu as your hosts. And the purpose of the Hawaii Farmers Series is to get to know our local agriculture community a lot more. Get their backgrounds, get their history, um, find out why they love what they do, as well as get some of their insights. And insights into hearing about the future of agriculture in Hawaii. So we're going to bring the experts on, but we'd also like you to be a part of the conversation. So you can always join us by tweeting in your questions and comment at Think Tech High. So we hope to engage with you. Thanks. <music> So upon your request, here's Martin in the 70s, next picture, late 70s. Late 70s. And so we had, we had a roof terrace, 
uh -huh. and this was us, my mother, my, my, my grandmother, look at how mean I look at my little sis, <laughs> sorry Cynthia, <laughs> and you know, nothing changed, I'm still like that. <laughs> You're still mean to your sister. And, and so, uh, and you can see, you see a lot of wood, and right. these are my memories, one of my most sort of clear memories of the 70s is me and my father who took the picture, so hi dad. We were driving to a lumber yard and we were getting these boards because it was all about doing it yourself, which we talked about right. before, that this architecture in the 70s is self-made, mm -hmm. not professional, Correct. but this sort of enthusiastically made from scratch. And as you can see, as this fence. And we should also say we were sort of maybe a little bit too glorifying the 70s as far as being the pioneer of, of uh, ec ecological Correct. Um, aspirations, which right. it was, but at the same time, I remember here, and that's maybe the reason, I don't know why you lost your hair, but I lost mine, maybe because we had to paint these boards with something that was called Xulamon, and it was highly toxic. And so I guess society was sensing that and going, but the industries were like not necessarily on Absolutely. board. Absolutely, and, today, and right? th th something else really prevalent in the 1970s, polyester, mm -hmm. chemicals. Oh, yeah. So we would talk to beforehand about um, it would be very typical to say, Here's a, here's a product that makes the wood look just natural, yeah, look yeah, like yeah. it's got nothing on yeah, it, yeah. and yet it protects. Yeah, yeah. Better living sealant, through chemistry, it sealant. seals it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, yeah, on yeah. one hand we have this, oh, we're all natural here, yeah, and yeah. on the other hand, but... And that's a perfect introduction to the next picture here, which looks like almost like the building inspector is looking like, how is it holding up? Right. And although my people still might say, oh, that's not how I would want it, you know, at my house. I, you know, being the sort of expert, I have to say, you know, half a century old or young, you know, not that bad. There was something bolted to it that they took off and there's even paint on there. And usually, you know, stuff like that rots away. But I attribute I, I to, the, to the position, the condition, it's up on the hill. It's very windy there, it's very breezy there. It's very sunny there too. So whenever the wood gets wet, it also gets immediately dried out again. So I have to say kudos. I mean, this is holding up fairly well. And, and wood is always a uh, temporary material. We know it's organic. So it's not eternal, just like we as human beings. That's Correct. why we have this sort of association with wood. That's right. right. And also, I must might point out, it's not just termites, but there are carpenter bees yeah. that like to eat that. Oh, yeah. I yeah. know them very well. And, and talking eating, which is the typology of the building, right? We get so the carpenter bees and the termites are eating the wood, yeah, and the yeah, human yeah. beings yeah. are eating the, the meat, but uh -huh. the wood is involved in the meat, too. Exactly. Next picture shows that. So when I was there, they were close to open. There were these nice guys. and. Uh, they were taking out, there's this little shack part of the building, and they were taking out this pieces, which when we go to the next picture, we can see. And that's, uh, that's Kiawi wood. And there it is. And, and I said, was that for? And they said, well, that's how we make our steaks. Mm -hmm. it's, we basically roast them or... Broil them. Yeah, on, on real wood. Yeah. So there we go. Wood isn't just a superficial stylish material here that you say, oh, my building wants to be wood because it looks right. cool, right? You can say there's this inherent sort of relationship between what they do and how the building looks like. Exactly. I agree with that. And we and can only commend uh, or recommend this to the young generation. Think about that. And I think that that, that is a really good point, that that's a steakhouse that uses wood mm -hmm. and it is a wood structure. Mm -hmm. And that mm -hmm. That uh, synergy yeah, is yeah, actually yeah. really very smart. And, and that, you know, now that we talk about it, think about it, maybe this, and we can already go to the next picture, uh, because um, usually the nature of mercantile typology is very sort of short term. You say like yes. there's a six uh, year turnover in design. Every six years, everything gets basically like renewed. Correct. Because Zeitgeist, thank you for That's explaining right. it previously, moves on. Mm -hmm. And so people, you know, only pay money if it's still cool. Right. So the owners feel like pressured and, and maybe the, the uh, when we go to 21, uh, maybe the, um, the interior probably doesn't really look uh, that original to me, to be honest, but, but I'm not absolutely sure. Well, you know, those wicker chairs look like they could they, be they from might, that time period. Might. Well, then, then they go along with the picture you were digging up, which we saw just before number 20, which is that menu. Yeah. Sign. There we got the, na the, the same kind of funny stylized kind yep. of palm trees. Right? Yes. Yes. So, so maybe it is. Uh, it's, a good, it's, it's a good point. So, um, yeah, if we, if we go back to, to number 21, it's really about, um, you know, the, the interior is, um, is pleasant. Yes. There's enough sort of light in there. There's enough, um, there's obviously character. Once again, we can see how the structure is exposed yes. as we had it with the last two yes. projects. Yes. It's celebrated. Yes. And um, 
but but also uh, due to the nature, it's you don't have to have a kitchen, so the kitchen is in the middle, you know. Right. So the, the space actually, you almost expect more when you come in. Correct. From the outside. I see what you're saying because so, a lot of the space seems to be used by the utilitarian purpose yeah, of the, of so, the pre food preparation. And so, whereas that might seem like a criticism, if you think about it, you know, maybe not because in his house it was almost the total opposite. Yes. That you know, Rob sitting here next to us, you know, is basically like uh, last time said from my childhood. There was always this sort of ghosty, spooky house that I had like no clue. That's right. What is that about? But right. once he was the audience and listening to us, and we walking through, he, he said, said, "Well, actually, now I understand it, and right. I appreciate it more." Correct. Right? And, so, and I was going to say too that that the, the the photograph that we saw earlier of the interior. Mm -hmm. Not only do you see the ex the, those those beams exposed. Correct me if I'm wrong. Those uh, horizontal beams go out, extend out to the outside, do they not? Mm -hmm. And they form mm -hmm. part of that exterior yeah, yeah, framework yeah, yeah, that yeah, we yeah, saw. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it also goes up. Is that a is that a uh, an angle ceiling or or I'm just seeing the it angles is. of it those. Is. Okay. Is. So again, we've got the continuation of the angles, yeah, yeah. and we've got the continuation of the framework mm -hmm. that's going from the yeah, inside yeah, to yeah. the outside. Yeah, yeah. And you have a higher space above you mm -hmm. at an angle that's mm -hmm. going along with the angled windows down there. Absolutely. So it's not happenstance that no, all these things no. got put together that way. Yeah, and, and along these lines, I have to say, I mean, the, the complexity is phenomenal of the building. The geometric and tectonic complexity is, is amazing. And I have to say, with as small as, I mean, wood is a, is a, is a material that every structural engineer makes it like, per se, three times as big because they're afraid. They said, well, it's weak and, you know, it cracks. And so we got to make it three times as big, which we were sort of saying, it maybe was the case in war warehouse Correct. a little bit. Whereas in this thing here, everything is so tiny, is so fragile. So I, I cannot imagine if I would have to redesign, or I design this here and now, and I go to the structural engineers of these times, and I say, hey, guys, let's go crazy. They probably say, we don't no, think so much. Yeah, you know, this right. is like... Probably wouldn't. You and, couldn't and, replicate it today, in other words. Yeah, no, no. Yeah. And, and there is some, you can see that in some parts, either maybe the building was getting a little tired or people were getting too paranoid, which I'm guessing the second. Yes. Uh, because we know this from Ella Moana and the guardrails failing. Actually, I will do cover Howard Wick next Monday. We're going to talk about that in parts. And so it, it's just this amazing, I was pointing out, you know, to, uh, to last show, I was showing my other experience from the mid-70s in building this uh, yeah. crazy treehouse which I have to correct myself, I was saying construction site, but it was a construction playground. There's a playground where they just left us alone with boards and nails and hammers. And I had like bloody, you know, of thumbs course. and <laughs> bruised <laughs> all over, <laughs> but it didn't kill me. And one could yeah. say maybe it made me, and that's why I wanted yeah. to be an architect. Of course, right? of course, yeah. I mean, so yeah, I, I wouldn't just give a hammer and nails to a bunch of little kids. No, but no, but we're, it worked way back. And it's so just, maybe we're just school too, hard knocks, toughen you up, eh? It, it we're just too paranoid. So, yeah. The next picture, number 22, is, is a detail of uh, sort of my most crazy picture that I can take. And you can see some of these sticks there in the afterthought and then aftermath. But again, I mean, the, the building is so eloquently uh, and elegantly composed and, and constructed. It's, it's just like amazing. So that's a steel framework or uh, where are you seeing that? No, these, these blue guys at the oh, diagonal, I see. They're I like see. they put them in after the fact to right. have some kind of support. But I see, I see. Again, I would say, you know, take them away. I mean, you know, go back and, and uh, sort of, uh, you know, strengthen some of the original structure than adding something. So it's just like a lame, I guess, sort of whatever. It's well, the other thing maybe. that this, this, you know, we just mentioned the, the changes in typography and, and mm -hmm. everything that, that comes and goes out of fashion. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This building is really cool looking mm -hmm, to me right mm -hmm. now, but at the same time, buildings like this that are very much of their time mm -hmm. and look out of the ordinary yeah, yeah. can also date very quickly. Yeah. And a new owner or yeah, a yeah, new yeah. management tend to mm -hmm. want to destroy mm -hmm. things mm -hmm. like that and wipe them out. So we have to give them credits here that they didn't do And I'm grateful because a lot of the other buildings that were yeah. Uh, more in Honolulu yeah, yeah. that we've lost mm -hmm. that people don't even no, remember. Exactly. We're very much of their time as yeah, well, yeah, no, absolutely. and they get wiped out. Yeah, no, we get to the end of the show. We always conclude traditionally with a little positive or yep. motivation. So for the emerging generation, uh, the project reminded me. I said Steve is a big inspiration for me, although I didn't know him at that point. But this was a few years ago when we were doing a community grocery store. And we applied a similar strategy that there is a sort of scaffolding, uh, there's a structure that projects out. In that case, is screened with a, with a membrane to then the next picture and the final picture, due to the nature of the fabric, 
uh, when the building is is backlit, mm. uh, you get the you get the bottom situation in the afternoon, and in the morning you get the top one. So a mercantile, uh, you know, typology is always about showing off, like it or not, you know. Yes. And you can do this with simple means, and we want to encourage the young generation and the colleagues here to once again maybe be excited about these sort of heroic, um, iconic, you call it, bioclimatic uh, structures. And where was that market? Uh, that's all in my hometown in Hanover, Germany with Hanover. my, yeah, with my that, family yeah. business. Yes, yeah. and, and, and I wanted to say that so somebody didn't try to drive around and look for it in Honolulu because it's not here. Mm -hmm. no, but no, it looks no, nice. No. Yeah, well, it looks thank nice. You, thank you. And again, the, our emerging generation will do even nicer stuff because that's the point we want to encourage. Learn from the past for the future. Mm -hmm. So that being said, uh, thank you again to Soto. You're welcome. We're going to take a little break for the next two weeks, but then we're going to come back and basically go back in time of Steve, and yes. we're going to talk about which project? We're going to talk about Ward Plaza. And uh, Ward Plaza is a brutalist structure. Mm -hmm. um, I think really intriguing, interesting to me, mm -hmm. and very attractive to see from the outside. So I think I'm going to enjoy talking and about that. And potentially also in danger. That's why yes. it's urgent to talk yes. about that. Yes, and, it is. And we also will present it at our DOCO photo shooting. Yes, we which will. Which is on the 29th, Saturday, 10 o'clock. Please be there. Ward Warehouse. And until then, it's good having you guys. And thank you for listening. See you next week.